and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can pass a button press from our controller through to an interactable object to perform some sort of action on it. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. Okay, so we're using the handgun from the previous video. It's already set up as an interactable object and the orientation handle is set up. I've just put that handgun in another game object called handgun and that's because we're going to put some additional logic in here in a moment also on the handgun if we just expand that and then expand the mesh container and then the handgun mesh inside the barrel i've just put a little particle system when we want to fire the gun it just fires these particles off so what we want to do is we want to take the trigger press from the controller and as we depress the trigger we want to pass that information through to the object that we are holding which is the handgun and we're going to control the trigger on the handgun doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards on this. First of all, in the handgun, we're going to add what's called an action receiver. So this receives an action that we publish somewhere else. So if we just go to the handgun, right click, go down to Tilia, Prefabs, and then in interactions, if we look in interactables, there's one called interactions action receiver. So we're going to add that and we can just rename this to trigger receiver. And this is what's going to be set up to receive that trigger press from our controller. We need to tell it what target interactable we're targeting. Well, we're targeting our handgun, so we want to put that in there. And the activation state is grab. There's different activation states, but basically what this will mean is whenever the gun is grabbed, it means we will receive this trigger message. So we can't fire the gun if we're not holding the gun. So we've set up the one side, so let's go and set up the other side now. So again, we need to use one of these action publishers, and we're going to put this action publisher in the same place as our right interactor so on our right controller alias we're going to right click go down to tilia prefabs and then in interactions knowing the interactors we should have an interactions action publisher so we'll add one of those and we're going to rename this now to right trigger action publisher and what this is going to do is we're going to listen for a source action and we need to know the source interactor well the source interactor for this is our right interactor so we'll drop that into there and our source action we're going to get from our input mappings. So if we look in our input mappings on our right controller input in right trigger, we're actually going to use the right trigger axis because we want to take the axis data, not just knowing when it's been pressed or not. So we're going to drag and drop the axis into there. So now we've set up our right trigger action publisher. So whenever that right trigger axis changes, this action publisher will publish that message. And then right down in our trigger receiver, we want to tell this to listen to those messages. So we're just going to grab our action publisher and put it in our source publishers. So that's going to listen to this. We also want to set this up for our left trigger as well. So in our left controller alias, we're just going to do the same. And there we go. We have our left one set up, point to the left trigger axis and the source interactor is our left interactor. And then on our trigger receiver, we want to say we want to listen from our right controller and our left controller. So we want both of those in our elements that will listen to both of those now. And then if we expand the trigger receiver, we can see we've got output actions. These are the different action types that we can receive. This will be a float action because the input that we're receiving was an axis value, which is a float action. So whatever happens when we press that trigger, this action will become activated. So this is what we need to look at. So what we want to do is if we look at our gun, when we receive that trigger press, we actually want this trigger on our gun. To actually rotate so it's following the press of our trigger so if we look up here on that z axis we can see here it's at a rotation of 90 and if we were to change that rotation we can see that actually makes our trigger move in the way if we were squeezing it we just need to know that we're at 90 normally and then we'd probably get out to 70 when it's fully depressed so let's just remember those two numbers 90 and 70 so what we need to do is a little bit of maths now to make sure that when we pull our finger on our trigger, it makes sure that trigger rotates accordingly. So the way we're going to rotate the trigger is we're just going to use a transform Euler rotation mutator. So let's add that component. And we'll just set this up quickly. The target is the handgun trigger. That's what we want to rotate. We want to use the local values. We only want to mutate on that Z axis and then we can leave everything else the same. So the next thing is we need a little bit of logic now. So what we want to do is we want to actually change this value based on the press of our trigger. We know the axis value is going to go from zero, not pressed at all, all the way to one when it's fully depressed. So we can use that information and we can do a little bit of mathematics to help us get that rotation that we need. 
So the first thing we're going to do is add something that allows us to multiply a vector 3 because the rotation information of our transform for the handgun trigger is a vector 3. It's an X, a Y and a Z and we just want to change to Z. So in our handgun we're going to add a vector 3 multiplier component. So again Zinnia, observable list component generator and then down in this we're just going to look for the vector 3 multiplier and we're going to add one of those components that's now appeared down there. You could write this completely in code if you wanted, but I'm trying to do as many of these videos without needing to dive into code at all, just in case anybody out there is a little bit unsure of how to write their own code. So with our vector three multiplier added, if we go to that, what we want to do now is add two elements to this. And the first element we're going to leave blank. And the second element we're going to times by minus 20. And what this is going to do is whenever we press our finger down on that trigger, we're going to add that value between zero and one. So this number here so this will either be zero or one or any number between zero and one and then this will multiply this value by this value so we'll either get zero times minus 20 which will give us zero or one times minus 20 which will give us minus 20 or let's say halfway pressed would be 0 0.5 times minus 20 which would give us minus 10. so that's the sort of logic that we're going for here and then the next thing we want to do is just add that information onto that default rotation of the handgun trigger, which if you remember is 90. And basically what this is doing is saying, if the trigger is fully pressed down, that will be a one. One times minus 20 is minus 20. And then we're gonna add that value to 90. So 90 plus minus 20 gives us 70, which is the rotation that we want when the trigger is fully depressed. So to do that, we're gonna add another component into our handgun, and we're just gonna use a vector three adder. And with that one added in, all we need to do is put a couple of components in here. And again, we're going to leave the first element as that will be set programmatically. And the second element is 90. And this is what's going to get added to whatever the value we get out of our multiplier. So let's run all the way back and set all these links up. So if you remember, when we press our trigger action, that gives us our float action. So our float action tells us that value between our trigger and our controller being not pressed at all or being completely pressed or anywhere in between. So that will change the value. When that value changes, it gives us the value between zero and one. And what we're going to do with that value is set the Z component on our vector three multiplier. So grab the vector three multiplier and drop it into there. And then all we want to do on the vector three multiplier is set the Z component. And then all we need to do is tell our vector three multiplier to do its transform operation, which is to multiply those two together. So that will tell it to multiply these two together. Once that's multiplied, we want to take the answer and simply pass that into our vector three adder. And then we just need to select the vector three adder, do transform and make sure it's a dynamic vector three one, not the one that's down here. It needs to be the dynamic vector three. So it passes that value through. So we take the value of our trigger between zero and one, multiply it by minus 20. That gives us our total rotation that we want. Then we add that to our initial rotation, which was 90, and that gives us our final rotation. And then all we need to do in our vector three adder now, when that's transformed and it's done its add, all we need to go and do is go to our handgun trigger. And then on there, we have the transform Euler rotation mutator, and we just need to set the property. And that will set the rotation value of our handgun trigger. And now finally, what we wanna do is when we've depressed that trigger, we just want to call gunshot particles to make that ply. So it looks like we fired the gun. So to do that, we're just going to add another empty game object in here and we'll call this fire gun logic. And what we want to do on here is take that float action and convert it into a Boolean. So when the float gets over a certain value, we just know that it's true or false. So we're going to add a float to Boolean conversion. And this positive bounds tells us when we want to consider that float to be a true Boolean. So if we say when we press the trigger to at least 0 0.9 to 1, then it's going to be true. Anything under that is false. So we'll put 0 0.9 in here. And then finally, we just want to put a Boolean action in that we can use to fire our gun off. So when this float to Boolean transforms, all we're going to do is pass that information into our Boolean action and call receive. So when this float to Boolean becomes true, so we've pulled our trigger at least past 0 0.9 or all the way to one, this becomes true. If we release our trigger, anything below 0 0.9, this will become false. And all we want to do is when this becomes true, when it activates, we're just going to call our gunshot particles. And on the particle system, we're just simply going to call play. And then when we've set up our fire logic, all we need to do is tell our float action on our value changed to just pass through to that fire gun logic. 
and just make sure we call our float to boolean do transform and that should be everything we need let's jump into the scene and see that working so now we're in the scene we can see if we pick the gun up and we've depressed our trigger down we can see the rotation of our gun trigger is moving and if i pull my trigger all the way back we can see our gun fires as well and if i was to swap hands we can see our left controller is also doing the same logic and there we go we've set up how we can pass through a different button press into an interactable object and then perform some sort of action i hope this video has been useful to you if it has please consider becoming a youtube subscriber leave any likes dislikes comments down below and please consider becoming a vrtk patron as well as that really helps out thanks for watching and bye for now